All right, this is going to be the first in a series of screencasts on lab report writing. Uh, in front of you, you can see the biology grade report or grading rubrics for writing lab reports. I'm going to pull up a sample lab report in a moment, but uh, this particular screencast will cover the introduction, which includes titles, dates, questions to be answered, background information, and the hypothesis. So let's take those one at a time. First off, your title and date account for three points of the lab report grade. And here in this particular lab report, we can see that uh, I've got my name on it, obviously, and that I've given it a title, which is a bit of a dry title, Enzyme Catalyzed Breakdown of Hydrogen Peroxide. Uh, while it's nice to make little catchy titles, generally we want to avoid that in science writing. Unfortunately, science writing is not about humor and wit and style. It's really about conveying information directly and with as little fanfare as possible. So give your title something that is specific to the experiment. Um, this would be, it would be a poor title to just call this enzyme catalysis or enzymes or something funny. This really does, in this case, tell us what we are doing with this particular enzyme. You also need to have a date should be the date that you did the, in the experiment, not the due date, not the date you wrote your lab report. It should be the date the experiment was performed. And then we have a question to be answered. Um, when I say formally stated on rubrics, what I mean is I actually have question to be answered, or colon. In this case, the question to be answered is, does the concentration enzyme affect what happens? Uh, so you might have more than one question to be answered in your lab. Essentially, you should have a question to be answered for each variable that you are testing in a given experiment. So in this case, our experiment hinges on whether this particular enzyme affects how much uh, hydrogen peroxide breaks down to oxygen and water. So there's our question. Okay, our introduction itself is worth 16 points. And you can see, we just talked about the question to be answered. I'm going to talk a little bit now about the background and procedure. And, uh, and then we'll talk about the hypothesis. So your background is essentially worth 10 points, um, and you need to weigh two seemingly opposing aspects when you write your introduction. You want it to be concise. You want it to be short and sweet and to the point, um, not being overly cluttered with information. But you also want to thoroughly explain the relevant concepts. So basically what it means is stay on task and don't... Um, ramble and drift, talking about things that might be interesting but aren't directly related to your experiment. In this case, our introduction ran about a page. It tells us about what enzymes are, um, and, but it doesn't go into great length of detail. Uh, if I opened my textbook, I would find multiple pages, in fact, almost half a chapter on enzymes themselves. We don't want to be talking about all the different details about enzymes. We want to strictly think about the properties of enzymes that relate to the experiment at hand. Um, obviously, for your individual lab report, the topic is going to vary, but the concept remains the same. Keep it to the point. Um, but be as thorough as you need to be to make sense of the experiment. And that's really the point of uh, an introduction, is you're setting up for the procedure so that when you actually read over the procedure of the experiment, you understand what all the different things are. So if you're testing uh, something using a spectrophotometer, you would need to give a very brief overview of what spectrophotometry is and how spectrophotometry works. But you don't need to give a really long, multi-page explanation. If you're talking about something using gas laws, you'd probably want to give the formula for the gas law equation and a little bit of information about that. Um, so you can see here that there's information about enzymes. Uh, and you can also note that the sources are cited. I'll have a separate screencast about literature cited, uh, but I would strongly, strongly recommend you use some sort of citation website and cite your information as you collect it, not at the end when it's time to write your bibliography. At the end of our introduction is our hypothesis, again, formally stated, and your lab may have more than one hypothesis if you are testing more than one variable. The good rule of thumb about hypotheses is that they should always follow an if-then format. So 
where we start with if and then, and they should always tie your independent variable and your dependent variable together. So our independent variable in this particular experiment is the concentration of enzymes. And essentially, the amount of that enzyme dictates what happens in the lab. So it is basically affecting the time required for these little pieces of paper soaked uh, with the enzyme to float up to the surface of a solution of hydrogen peroxide. So the hypothesis should be worded in such a way that it is what we call falsifiable, meaning that if the concentration of enzyme didn't cause the paper disc to float to the surface better, it would directly violate this hypothesis and cause us to refute that hypothesis. Um, at the end of our lab report, we're going to come back to this hypothesis. Um, one of the other things that you really want to do is give a very, very, very brief summary of kind of what's going on in the experiment. So in this case, you just, this last sentence, it says the rate of production will be measured by timing the time required for oxygen levels to collect on a small piece of filter paper and float that paper, piece of paper up to the surface. So you have kind of an idea without any of the details of what's going to happen in this experiment. And so when you actually jump into the procedure, it's very straightforward of the steps to do that task. Okay. If you follow these steps and apply them to your particular experiment, you should be well on your way to writing a really good sound introduction. And I'm happy to look over some of the details of your particular lab report. Um, I may not prove the whole thing but I will be glad to check over uh, to see that you're on the right track. Hope this helps, and uh, tune in for the next uh, screencast, which will be over procedures and uh, materials.